So Jamie. Yes, Glenn. What do you think of our new new studio here? I can't believe what you've designed in That's here. Pretty cool, ain't it? Yes, it is. And check this out. Um, here. You might try from that angle. It was oh. a little upside down. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Jamie Howard. And I'm Glenn Durant. And recently we got to go to Garden Plain High School where we visited the Owl's Nest. It's this great place that they've built for the high school students. Um, and it's actually a restaurant. The kids actually operate a restaurant, which is the really cool thing about it. So you get some real world experience while in high school with on this. Check it out. Today we're on location at The Nest in Garden Plain High School, part of the Renwick School District in Kansas. And we're sitting with uh, Gina Clark. She is the College and Career Ready Advocate. Is that correct? And she's going to tell us a little bit about how The Nest started. Um, in 2010 or 2011, about that time, our uh, principal, Tracy Bourne, who's now our superintendent, um, came to me and asked me if I had heard of a place at Heston High School called The Pit Stop. It's very similar to our, our cafe, and uh, I had not. And he said, you know, we have the perfect space for it. This was actually um, an old weight room, and we built on a new weight room. And so we were, we had the space, and he said he'd like to, you know, be supportive in the idea if, if I had a way to kind of take it and, and run with it. And so but that, that's where the idea generally came from. But then tell me about your role before and then how it transitioned into what you're doing now. Um, I've been a business instructor here for 10 years and teaching business classes. And so we actually turned it into a class. And probably what's unique about it is this was a, a school-wide and community-involved um, endeavor, I guess I would say, because we have about $70,000 invested in it. And, and that didn't just come from, you know, the school. And in, in, in fact, you know, the, the, the school gives us a lot, but I think the community um, um, helped us out. We had an anonymous donor who gave us $20,000 to start. She heard about our idea and she was really enthused about it. And that, that covered our um, electrical and plumbing remodel. And, uh, you know, then we've used some of our CTE money to secure some things. Um, the Garden Plain Chamber of Commerce has been very actively involved with us and uh, gave us a, a large sum of money. And then, you know, just $50 here, $100 here, that, that first year in 2012, when we started in August, that, that's what we spent the whole, you know, the first fall semester doing is just fundraising, fundraising, fundraising until we got enough money to get started. Now, at that time, was it you and who else was working in conjunction to make that happen? Uh, mostly myself. Really? And a group of uh, about 13 kids in the class at that time. And so they really got to build it from the ground up. Uh, the stage we're sitting on, uh, the boys in, in that class, they went out and, and, and worked with our uh, um, our teacher out there, uh, Mr. Gordon, and he helped him build the stage. We have some seating over there on the north side that are some booths that have some storage underneath. And, and again, those kids got together and built those. The ceiling tiles, everything that's painted in here, the kids all did. Um, we had a group of kids who, um, you know, chose and ordered all of the furniture and, and followed our budget. And so uh, the the wood on the north wall came from a barn. We got together as a class and we drove out to a farm and we tore an old fence down and came back to school and refinished the wood a little bit. And our, our custodian at that time had some, some construction experience and he helped us install it. And so... Every, every little piece in here is a, is a huge group effort from our from our school and community. How many pathways do you cover? I'm, I'm talking educational wise now. I don't know. They, um, they surely for know. For us, is a, ours is, is a marketing pathway in the business department, and then and then we have uh, some audiovisual and uh, other pathways as well. So, who, let's say, pick the software to run the concessions? Um, actually, Jared took care of that. I said, you know, I don't have a lot of time to just go online, find a couple of TVs to purchase in the mounts. And then when they got here, I was like, figure out how to put something on them. I, I, don't, I don't know what to pick. And he, he took care of that and just ran with it. I didn't even have to do anything. So Now, Jared, what did that look like for you? Because um, you're having your teacher come to you and say, hey, I, I really need your help. Yeah, when she first came to me and told me I need two TVs with mounts, uh, can you figure out how to get some menu boards? I was kind of 
uh, uneasy about it at first, but <laughs> um, she pretty much gave me the budget we wanted for the TVs and everything, and I figured out what we were going to need for it and got them in. And once we got them in and I played with them for a little bit, did a little bit of research, it was pretty easy to figure out um, how to get the menus up there, what software to use for it. And once we got them up, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there. I just designed the boards and got them put up. We also had the help from our tech teacher, Mr. Rockers. You know, um, he asked him if his class, you know, could he bring them in and they actually installed the boards and, and mounted the TVs. So that, that's things that, that's not my specialty. So we knew he could do it and he brought his kids in and they made it happen. Glenn and I, as we drove into town, I was wondering why the nest, but then it became more and more clear to me why it was named the nest. No, I mean, we're the owls. I think when we started, there wasn't even any other name under consideration. It just, somebody said the nest because, you know, I guess that's where owls are. And it, I guess when you think about your nest, you think about your house, your home, um, as a, as a family. And so it's, it's our little cozy place. What are your biggest pride moments for you? Right now, get to see them be interviewed and, uh, you know, we're in year five. Um, one of the biggest pride moments is simply getting it open. I'd never been a part of anything, even in the business world, building it from ground up. Um, I, I didn't know anything about construction. I didn't know how to pick lighting. Um, uh, but now you do. Yeah, well, so <laughs> you were a learner with them. Yes, absolutely. In, in the group we had that year, we you know we all learned together. Um, Greg Tice is on, one of our is our school board president, and uh, he is a partner in Spangenberg Phillips and Tice Architecture Firm, and so. They partnered with us and uh, did all the uh, drawings and, and blueprints for, for making this look like this because we knew we didn't want it to look like a classroom. We wanted mm -hmm. it to look different when people come in and more like a coffee shop or a little trendy, trendy spot you would stop and have a drink. What were your biggest challenges for you? Or what are they still today? Uh, biggest challenge is just the financial side of it. Um, we, uh, Mrs. Dooley in the office helps um, with our accounting and every penny matters. And when I'm watching the account, you just, it's, you know, worry about your own budget at home. And then now you have a budget to worry about here at school. Are, are we gonna make enough to keep things going? Cause again, we don't have the financial support of anybody but our own, but our own tasks here. Now, how do you decide what big events you'll support here? Let's say the chili cook off or um, after, what did you say? You said, uh, Musicals. musicals you open it up you have after hours on those days usually for those type of events it's usually not any athletic events or anything where the normal concession set concession stand is open uh, run by the booster club or whoever runs that this is usually open on school events where there's not a concession stand like uh, musicals plays or like the craft fair where there's gonna be a lot of outside community members in here uh, and in the gym looking at all the stuff so We'll usually have people come in from this class to work it and we'll have set hours that we have to come in and work or, you know, our grade in the class might drop, but we usually come in, work that and work the chili cook off, which is usually going on during the craft fair. Uh, we also the last few years have had a fine arts night. So in conjunction with uh, the uh, band and choir concert and our Mr. Little, our art teacher, They'll have a, a gallery of art on display and then we'll host some kind of a meal in here. The, the theme, it might be, you know, an Italian meal or Mexican meal, um, something that it brings in the community to, to use this space. And we're trying to remind everybody that this space is theirs, community, the uh, Chamber of Commerce has met in here. I've had people um, used on weekends for a baby shower. Um, and we have like, we had our state track um, before the kids went to the state track meet, the parents come in here and use it to set up a, a big, you know, buffet of meal for, for the kids to, to enjoy. So just always try to encourage everybody, it's our gathering space. It's a, it's a great place to be. Now you said, one of you said the last hour of the day is where you all get to come together. Yep. What does that normally look like? Well, we usually start with getting the sound system going <laughs> and then uh, we got our Chromebooks and Mrs. Clark sends a list to us every day of what our tasks tasks are. And so then we decide who's doing what and we kind of just sit around for the first couple five minutes and we all get to work and get our stuff done. How do you make sure everything is covered throughout the day? Who has that responsibility or how do you sign up 
to cover events or do you have two days a week that you have to come in at 7.30 in the morning? How does that work? I think with, I think there's 17 kids in the class. So with that, it worked out. Connor created the calendar from August to December. He just basically went through and assigned everybody a morning to work. Try to keep, I guess, try to keep it even. Yeah, they have, uh, everyone has four days and one person has five, but it's, um, uh, you, it's their responsibility to, I'll, I'll tell them at the end of the day if they work the next day, but it's their responsibility responsibility to remember and set an alarm or whatever. What are your biggest challenges? Our biggest challenge is counting the register and making sure it's right and dealing with shortage and being over. Um, another challenge is making sure we count the bags right and how much money is in each bag because that's what we take to Cindy, which is our secretary lady. And if it's not right, then she's not happy, and then Mrs. Clark isn't happy, and then we're not happy. So that's the biggest challenge for us. One of the biggest challenges that I think we have going is just how to keep it fresh or how to keep it a good place to go to. Um, we added the frozen yogurt machine. Is this year three? Two and a half? Two, I think. Two, two full years. Yeah. And, um, we added a new 100% fruit slush machine this year, and then the new digital menu board. So always how to add add new things. Uh, the food guidelines from the United States Department of Agriculture really, really hit us pretty hard a few years ago because we used to be able to serve anything we wanted, and that was nice. But now one of the biggest challenges is finding a, a food that kids want to eat that tastes good and is, that, and is affordable because some of the, you know, reduced fat, you know, it's it's great, but there's not much in the package. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste very good, and it's too expensive for them to even think about purchasing. Do you know who, I want to call them the founding nesters, the founding owls? Do you know, can you identify some of them? And, out, I mean, this is just me talking right now, but just saying thank you. You have made this possible. Um, I know uh, some of the people from that class, that graduating class, but I don't know you know exactly who was in this class working on this hands-on but uh I, we've never really went back and you know said thank you or anything like that but uh i think they know that we appreciate mm -hmm. it and they take a sense of pride in knowing that they helped start something like this there's a wall underneath the counter over there that we'd left uh, that we left unpainted where they all signed their names it's oh. behind the safe um so just their way to to leave a little there. little bit behind so well i do appreciate all of your time coming out and taking time from your class to visit and i honestly hope to come back again but i want to be a customer too. <laughs>